Hey guys, welcome back, and it's time for a journey alone. In my subway train, an old blind woman raised a well-worn metal mug to my face. An old man who looked like her husband was helping her from behind with one hand. His other hand was holding out a worn-out speaker. It was playing, May happiness be with you. Beijing had banned solicitation of a subway. But these beggars could still be often seen in the cars. Nobody wanted to be the bad guys and feel guilty, so no one would report them to the authorities. I put five bucks in my mug. I usually wouldn't do something like this. I just wanted them to leave me alone today. Besides, the beggars only fewer passengers in the train car. My mother's son had just come back from the amusement park. A couple were laughing and just looking at the tablet. A sally man who apparently had just gone off work was selling his honey on my phone to get a bit about him. I thought swim, yes. I didn't want to go home because even at home I would still be alone. The car was quiet except for occasional chit chatting with wheels, running along with tracks of PA system announcing the stops. Next station is station B. Next station is station G. Station G is a transfer station. Passions for other line, please prepare to get off. Next station is station H. Station H is a transfer station. Passengers for another line, please prepare to get off. Next station is station P. I'm not sure how many stations it had been since I got on my train at station B near my home. Didn't bring much money, didn't bring much of anything with me. Perhaps I should just keep going until I reach the final station of the countryside. I had enough money on me to buy another ticket to, a, to Tianjin. I could go and watch the ocean there. Last time my gun was when I was in elementary school. And I remembered that I'd gone my father that time. Perhaps this time I wouldn't be coming back. I lay down on the chair next to me and raised my left hand in front of my eye. Pleasant lights of ceiling shone from my fingers as if they were blinking. Ring out of my finger, seemed to be fading out. God, my fate's already determined or not. Is it really something that could be changed? Let's reverse the order. Map? Apparently we've got a map of this one. B. H G P I don't know where it's a map, but whatever. I stayed on the subway, changing from one line to another, hesitating. Finally decided to go home. It was already dark when I came out of Station B. It was in a highly populated neighbourhood. The only reason he and I decided to live here was because the rent was cheaper. The grass was tall near the exit and the street lights were a little dim. I walked down the street and watched my own shadow getting longer and longer. Suddenly another shadow appeared next to mine. For a split second I fantasised it was his shadow. A red cloth was put on my nose and mouth. It had a very strong smell. My brain stopped functioning. I was lost inside darkness. Don't want to end up near B. I mean, does it matter where I start here? P G H B. Well, I finally got home. I went into an apartment, carrying a bag full of random goods from the Royal Shopping Mall. The place was a mess. Toys and clothes that I still hadn't sold were everywhere. I washed my face, then two apples were in my fridge. There were only edible things in there. I took a bite from them. But we want in front of a photo of Mr. Wen. Hey, how you been? I'm doing well. 
I would say Mr. Photo every time I came back. Then I would pretend that he responded and asked about my day, which I would then reply had been doing well. It was a total lie. He'd had a surgery at the same time I graduated. It was a success at first, but however, during my freshman year in pre med, things took a bad turn. The doctor said this cancer spell cells had spread. Without telling him, I took a leave of absence from school to take care of him, and I started living with him. He was always cheerful in the beginning, assuring me that there was all kinds of new treatments. And he was just trying to make me feel better. I was still watching him and getting weaker and weaker, losing the fight day by day. Cancer was a real monster. We were completely powerless against it. On the same day three years ago, he was gone, and left me all by myself. I'd applied to medical school because of him, but I'd lost all my will to continue after he passed away. So I dropped out of school and started working. Since, didn't, since I didn't have my college diploma, all I could get was some random part-time jobs. I used a spare time to manage an online shop, selling small, cheap goods. My earnings could barely cover my monthly rent. Sometimes I literally couldn't afford meals and I had to shamelessly go around and beg for help from Jing. I had only recently got a job after graduating from college. Sometimes I wonder if there was any point in living like this. The only things that kept me going was precious memories of him. I opened the glass doors in my cabinet. My notebook was on my light. I had all the text messages between me and him. I had a copy of them all down in a notebook from my phone. An artist's collection book was right next to a notebook. He once took me to an exhibition of that artist. I felt the album was placed to its left. I took the album out. The first photo of my album was a woman was in a coffee shop. I was the only one before, from us before we were officially together. We'd taken many, many afterwards. There was one with sort of New, New Year's Eve countdown, one with us festivals, one with him cooking, one with sleeping, one with him going through chemo, one with him pacing in a hospital yard, and the last one with him smiling weakly at the camera. He seemed to have known what it would be the last memory he'd ever leave with me. The timestamp said it had been taken March 26th, one day before my birthday. It was the day before my 20th birthday. That's an S. Wow, Lee Wen. Let's jump straight into Jimmy's Jumanji game. Hopefully it's a bit more light-hearted, but after what happened last time, I don't know. The antidote I just inject you with will allow you to breathe for two more hours. I'm waiting at the location marked up a map. Some small letters have been written below. Circled by some curls. Jumanji. I almost wanted to tear a map we'd left it was doing well into pieces. I was wondering with Psycho. Freaking Jumanji? If you haven't seen an old movie, it must be an ancient freak. I don't even have a fucking driving license. I banged my head on the steering wheel and left a horn scream in my frustration. And a few minutes later, not even a bird seemed to have been disturbed, not, not to mention any human neighbours and my own showing up to yell at me. <sighs> if I was just driving right. I'd seen it in movies. I tried to recall the controls in all the racing games. On a scene from initial D, of course. I stepped on the brake, I shifted the gear, and turned the ignition. I heard a great series of teeth grinding screeches, the engine finally started. It sounded exactly like an old man and asthma. The car seemed to move forward slowly. Held onto a wheel for dear life, I was able to guide it out of a warehouse. I didn't scratch a wall, nor did a bummy electric pole. I kept going, stopping and stop, starting numerous times along the way. After following him up for 20 minutes, I finally began to see other cars on the road as well, getting more crowded around me. At first, I thought the traffic would slow simply because I'd gotten closer to the city. But I started to realise something wasn't right. There seemed to be too few people and too many cars. I turned the radio and the anchors happened to be reporting the news. College students are gathering on the streets to oppose a recently proposed controversial draft of the education bill. At the moment, protesters are moving towards Mung Kuk. Police have arrived to maintain the peace during the protest, so are blocks are currently close to regular traffic. In fact, the areas are seeing a significant increased travel time. All drivers should remain alert of road conditions and try to avoid these areas. 
protest? An alarm went off in my head, it was too late. Scranky our car was stuck firmly in the middle of a traffic jam and nowhere else to go. Temporary roadblocks were placed at several crossings that could be used for turning. Several police motorcycles were parked nearby with lights blinking red and blue. The policemen were directing traffic and my cars were moving slower than pedestrians. If I kept going like this, I'd be dead before I got right past this block. I checked the map to confirm a route pie had drawn. Balls. I did it on purpose. Fine, if I wanted to play, I'd gain. And I'd play Toretto then. And nothing to lose. I turned the wheel to fall to my left and stepped from a gas as hard as I could. The car knocked the roadblocks out of the way and continued down to the street. I kept slamming a horn and down the college students in front of me. Soon I heard sirens from behind me. The policeman had just been spying at me a few seconds ago. We're now coming toward, up towards me on my bikes. They could up with me, I wouldn't get to restart my game. I got through the street as fast as I could and turned onto a road I was familiar with. Finally, there was no more damn protesting students. A light turned green, 200 metres ahead of me. Very few people ever use that crossing, so a green light typically lasted for 10 seconds. I knew I had to go through it every time I went to a supermarket. However, as your direction was, was a truck exit. Off the freeway, we usually had a lot of cargo trucks, the red light would last for one full minute. I glanced at the speedometer. I was going at 45 kilometers an hour, 15 meters a second. I had to get rid of a policeman here. I drove at the same speed for 100 meters. Except on a gas harder, accelerating and increasing my speed four times over. I drove for another 100 meters. Except for a brake. Hard and reduced my speed by half. In my wildest dreams I never thought I would actually be involved in a car chase. I definitely had not imagined I would be driving an old piece of junk that might fall apart at any time. Still, the engine seemed to be roaring with confidence. So a car was trying to tell me we used to be a beast too. The car and I flew across the crossing, leaving a stream of black smoke behind us. Oh crap. I'd gone too fast too soon. The policeman sped up right after me and got through a green light too. I won't be able to find another chance to get rid of him later. More police to join the chase. The end was blocked by two police cars. Green lights almost made me blind, surrounded by numerous officers and my guns. I had no choice but to step up a car with my hands held behind my head. I got slammed onto me a hot engine cover. Sir, you have a right to remain silent. Everything you say will be used. Hearing those lines I'd only heard on TV and movies, I did not excite me as I expected. They said I'd been accused of unlawful driving, speeding, vandalism of public property, murder. Wait, murder? They brought me by my car, but the truck was open. There was all kinds of knives, handcuffs, shovels, and tools in it. Some had some sinister looking red liquid on them. What the hell? I can imagine Pi sitting on a sofa, sipping a glass of red wine, mocking me. He must be the sickest, most devious serial killer ever. Didn't have much time left. Now I'm to convince the police I was the innocent. Sitting in the back of the car, all I could do was pray. My goddess of fortune, please show me miracles. Interesting. So light to turn green. I'm actually going to need to write this down because this is actually ma maths. So light turn green, 200 metres ahead. 10 seconds to get there. Okay. 15 metres a second. I stepped on gas hard, accelerating four times over, so about so for ten for hundred meters, followed by sixty meters a second for another hundred meters. So fifty I'm gonna get my calculator out of this one, where are we cal calculator app? This game wants to where's my calculator? Uh, there it is. So, 100 metres at 15 metres a second would take 6.7 seconds. And then 100 metres at 60 metres a second would take 1.7 seconds. So it adds up to 2.5 um, seconds. So we need to get there sooner, so we need to go slightly slower. Now let's check the um, start. This is going to be maps, I swear. So, 
So the first driver's so same speed for 100 meters is set. So that's going to take 6.7. So that leaves me with 3.3 seconds to spare. If I reduce my speed by half, I'm going to be doing 30 meters. I'm going to be doing 7.5 meters a second. 100 meters at 7.5 meters a second is 30.33, so that means I'm going to not make it in time. Fight! Increase my speed, then halve it. I'm going to break 7.5. And increase it by four, so that means I'm doing it 30 meters a second, so double my speed. So 100 meters in 30 meters a second is 3.33, which is exactly what I need. So let's do that. Wow, live maths. Light turned red just as I drove past a crossing, and a couple of cargo trucks rushed out from your direction. The police had to stop before crossing. Yes! I drove into another alley and finally lost them. I watched the rest of the way as fast as I could, trying my best not to attract unnecessary attention. I uh, turned from a flat road to a zigzag uphill climb, with fewer and fewer lights too. Finally, I'd reached the end of the road, as a destination marked on a map. It took me an hour and a half. There's nothing else beyond the road but some woods. Would Pi be waiting for me? Get out of the car. Just as I was hesitating whether or not I should call him, the theme song my favourite game, so he started playing in a nearby bush. Hell yeah!